Yeah, my name is Michael Burridge. I'm a developer relations wrangler. I work at Automatic. Um, this is 2023, and it's uh, 10 years now since I've been working with WordPress. Um, I'm also a former WordCamp Europe organizer. I was on the organizing team for WordCamp Europe in 2018 in Belgrade, 2019 in Berlin, and 2020 in Porto that got cancelled for, we all know what, why. <laughs> Um, right, so before we, we kick off, um, why would you want to migrate a shortcode to a block? Well, one reason is to improve the WYSIWYG experience for content editors and other non-technical users, um, because there's a shortcode block, so you if you've got a shortcode, a plugin that implements a shortcode, you can put the shortcode in the shortcode block, but um, it just looks like, you know, it doesn't look great. It doesn't actually render the content in the editor, and so users don't get that WYSIWYG experience, uh, which is the intention of the block editor. Um, another good reason to convert your shortcode plugin to a block is that you can add some features and functionality that either not that can't be done or is not easy to do with a shortcode plugin, and we'll go on to look at um, at some at how we can make the plugin version or the block version of our plugin uh, had to have uh, better functionality than the plugin, the PHP shortcode version. You know, and and um, uh, as we go through this project, what we'll do is we can still retain the shortcode functionality so for the backwards compatibility. So, uh, so people who, are, who have used uh, the shortcode block, they, it, the plugin will still work, you know, whether you, the user uses the shortcode or whether they use the newly implemented block version. Okay, has everybody, there's a few things that um, were on the list that you needed to have. Has everyone got NVM, uh, st sorry, uh, Node and NVM installed? Has everyone got Git installed? And has everyone got a WordPress environment like Laravel Valet or Devkinster or Local? Yes, or MAMP? Anyone not got those? Okay. Um, as we work through this thing, if you get stuck or any, at any point, uh, a couple of people are helping out in the room. There's Ryan here who will, uh, who will go around. Just stick your hand up if you need help. And Christoph at the back has also uh, agreed to help out. So stick your hand up, and one of them will come over. If they're, they're both busy... Uh, and I'm not busy talking, I can come out and, uh, and help you as well. Okay, so, I have to keep moving the cursor over here in order to move through the, uh, to the next slide. Right, okay, first of all, I need you to, in your WordPress, installation, go to the WP content plugins directory and then clone, sorry, get closer to the microphone, <laughs> clone the repo into your plugins directory, please. give you a minute or two to do that.
everyone got the repo? Not yet. No. Okay. Into your WP content plugins folder of your WordPress installation. <coughs> okay, those of you that have got it already, if you activate the plugin in the WordPress admin. Well, let's just have a quick look through the, um, through what we've got in the, uh, in that repository. So you've got the PHP file, the WCEU FAQ PHP. You've got a, C a CSS folder with a WCEQ FAQ styles.css file. You've got a work sta workshop stages folder and a workshop notes folder. The, works, the workshop stages folder has, I've broken the workshop down into five stages and each of those folders has the project as it will be at that stage. So if anything doesn't work at some point, say at stage two it's not working and you can't move on to stage three, you just copy everything from stage two folder into your root directory and rebuild and it should all start working again. It might also be a good idea to actually open up the repo in a browser. So forget the git clone bit. Just open up the re repo in a browser tab because then you can access the notes as well. And you can copy and paste the code from the notes into uh, as you build the project, instead of having to type everything out, though you're free to type if you want to. And you'll also be able to see the notes that I'm actually reading from here. So if you open up the, the repo and then go to the workshop notes folder, currently on section zero, but there's nothing in there that you need at the moment. Just so you can use that as a reference and, um, and then you, you can also use it to copy and paste the code snippets from. So in the workshop stages folder for stage zero, you'll see a WCEU workshop.xml file. Now that you have the plugin installed and activated, import the XML file into your, uh, into your WordPress installation. There's, um, in case anyone needs a hint, there's a, in the tools menu, there's an import. And if you haven't used, done an import before, on this particular WordPress installation, you'll need to install a plugin, but it prompts you to do that. I'm sure you've all done this before. Yeah, import the XML file, wceuworkshop.xml, import that. So go to Tools, Import, and it will, it will prompt you through. So if you need to install the Importer plugin. 
that just gives you some demo content that we can work with. So what you should see now in the left-hand sidebar of your WordPress admin is an FAQ uh, menu option. And if you click on that, you should see five or six FAQs that you've just imported. Do you all see that? Anyone not see that? Okay, then if you create a new post or page, it doesn't really matter. And then, sorry, let me just uh, head over to the next slide. Ah. Sorry, I had, that, had all that on the next slide anyway. Create a new page or post and put, the, um, uh, put two short codes in as illustrated there. Yeah, so you'll need to, in your postal page, you'll need a shortcode block and then put that shortcode into the shortcode block. You're all using the block editor, yeah? No one's using the classic editor. Good to know. So you're going to create two shortcode blocks, one with the first shortcode and one with the second shortcode that has a category. Then save your post or page. I'll just say post from now on, because everything's a post in WordPress. So save your post and then go and look at it in the front end. And you should see that your first block of FAQs will have all the all five or six FAQs, and the second one will just have, I think it's four from the uh, from a specific category. Everyone seeing that? Everyone with me? Awesome. Right, let's go have a look at WC FAQ PHP in the, the root directory of the plugin. And let's just have a quick look at it. So you can see that it implements a custom post type for, um, to store each uh, FAQ. So that's uh, fairly straightforward. It also implements a custom taxonomy called WCFAQ cat. Then there's the shortcode function itself, which checks if there's a category in the shortcode, um, creates the args array that's going to be passed to WP query. If there's a category, it adds a taxonomy query to the args array, and then goes and fetches, runs WP query to go and fetch the FAQs. And then there's a show FAQ variable which, and the markup is basically rendered into that variable and that is then echoed and there's some housekeeping stuff there as well. So that's the shortcode function running. That's what renders on the, the front end. And there's also a check for shortcode function because we're enqueuing a, a CSS file um, if we just include it, it would appear, it would be uh, downloaded for every page, uh, whether there was an FAQ uh, shortcode in the page or not. So this just checks if there's a, a shortcode and only enqueues it if the shortcode is found. So if the shortcode isn't on a post, then that's not enqueued and that just makes everything more efficient. 
And so, yeah, so very basic, very simple uh, shortcode plugin that implements a custom post type. Right, let's get started on, on building, the, uh, building the block. Everyone with me? Yep, excellent. Right, in the root of your, your, the plugin, so in the same directory that wcfaqphp is, run this command. What this command does, it runs the WordPress create block scaffolding tool, which scaffolds a, a block. Because we already have a plugin, now WordPress create block will normally scaffold a full plugin with a PHP file. We've already got that, so we don't need the, the full plugin scaffolding. So we specify no plugin switch. And we're going to be building out a dynamic block. So we specify variant, dynamic, and then the last bit, WCEU FAQ block, is going to be the name of the block. And what NPX does, it kind of goes, fetches the, uh, fetches the NPM package uh, remotely, put, executes it in memory, and then removes it. So you don't actually have to have that NPM package installed. No, in the same folder as the as where you have wcfaqphp, run it in that directory. Inside the plugin. Inside the inside the plugin directory. So, so inside wp content plugins. Uh, whatever the plugin is called, WCEUFAQ, okay. I think. So the block is inside the plugin? The block is inside the plugin, yes. Sorry. Yeah, so you run that command from the same directory right. as the, as the WCEUFAQ PHP file is. Yes, if you've had trouble doing the import of the XML file, just put three or four FAQs in and two categories and assign them to the, uh, a couple of FAQs to each category. Right, so we've all got the scaffolded block. So if you look in, so you, what you'll now have, in addition to wcfaq.php and the CSS folder, you'll now have a new folder called WCEU FAQ block. Yes? Okay. In there you've got uh, six files, block.json, edit.js, editor.scss, index.js, render.php, and style.css. If you open block.json, oh, hold on. Open block.json, and this is just largely cosmetic stuff, but just change a few of the, uh, of the properties in, uh, in block.json. Yeah. 
to what you see up there. Of the repo, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Let's move on to the next step. I want you to create a package.json file, again in the root, so in the same directory as the WCEU FAQ.php. And and populate that file with that. You can copy it. If you've got the repo open, go to workshop notes section 1.md and you can just copy that block from there. give you a minute or so to do that. Yeah, just as a reminder, go to the repo, open the workshop notes folder and section 1.md and you can copy the, uh, no, about halfway down that page, uh, it's the, the third code block. You can co just copy and paste that into a new package.json file. In the plugin folder, the same directory as wceufaq.php. Okay, we're all caught up. There's one more step to do. And that's register. Yep, we've done that. Register the block. So, this goes in the WCEU FAQ PHP. So, with the same file that the short code is implemented in. So, where those functions that we looked at earlier. In that, at the bottom of that file, so below the short code function, So below the line that says add short code, type this or copy and paste this from the, uh, from the note section 1.md. This is the last code block on that page. This is the bit that actually registers the block.
So what we have here is we have an action hooked onto the init hook that runs the register block function, and that runs register block type passes it the build directory. Well, you haven't got the build directory yet. That's the next step. But all the JavaScript and React code for the block will run from the build folder. And that's what this is doing, telling it to register a block that's contained in the build folder or that will run from the build folder. Right, make sure you've saved all your changed files, and then run from the command line, again, from that same directory, from your plugin directory, run npm install. And then that'll give you a node modules folder, and then you can run npm run build. And now once you've run npm run build, you should be able to go into your, your page or post again, and you should now be able to add a WCFEU, WCEU FAQ block. You can just add it below the shortcode blocks if you wish, or create a new post to, that, that just has the block on. Oh, of course. Okay, so you're still on that stage, are you? Or still on npm install? Okay. We'll wait. We are not loading the internet. Okay, while we're waiting for npm install to run, let's have a quick look at package.json. The most important thing here is the scripts. Your, um, the most important ones there are, are start and build. So I've already asked you to run build, but we haven't got to that stage yet. And, and then start we'll use a bit later. So build is used when you want to build your final version and start script runs like a watcher that keeps that watches any changes to your files and automatically builds. So we'll be doing that in the next step. So we don't have to keep running NP, uh, npm run build every time we make a change to our files. And then the other, only other thing is the dependencies uses WordPress scripts. And that's pretty much all that's happening in package.json. npm run build will actually build okay. your thing. They both actually do the same job. They both build the, uh, the project for you into the build folder. Um, you would normally use build to build your final project when you're ready to deploy. Start is, is used during development because it implements a watcher, which watches for changes in the file and automatically builds whenever it changes. So we'll be using that as we go through the development, but we're just doing a quick build now just so we can get something into the, our editor and we can see that we've got a, a working block. So are we still all on NPM install? Oh, right, so if you tether your phone, use 4G, it comes in quicker. Yes. There you go. <laughs> if you're still waiting. I'm seeing a lot of connections from the phone, not from the wire, so I guess people are already doing it. So when npm install has finished, do npm run build and then add a, add a new 
WCEU FAQ block into your page. I really should have named that differently because WCEU FAQ is a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> Okay, has everyone been able to add their block to their, to their post? Anyone not been able to do that yet? At the back there. Anyone else? Still NPM installing. Okay, who's still NPM installing and who's got the, who can see their block? So about three or four people. Who can see the block in their editor? And who didn't put their hand up to either question? <laughs> because that wasn't everyone. For those of you that can see the block in the editor, at the moment all you'll see is a blue block that says hello from the editor, and in the front end you'll see a blue block that says something, something similar. Yeah, hello from a dynamic block. Anyone still NPM installing here? Whoa.
So if you're ever in any doubt about where a file goes, you can always compare it to the, to the stage that we're at. So you can always compare your project to the state, uh, workshop stages, stage one folder, and your project should look like that. How's the NPM install going? <laughs> oh dear. So just two people, we're just waiting on two? No, oh gosh. I didn't anticipate that the in install process would take so long. So apologies to those who are, who are at that stage already and are still waiting. We'll give them a couple more minutes to catch up.
Okay, how are we doing with the NPM install? Good there, good there. Anyone still waiting? One person, just one person still waiting. <laughs> we'll wait. <laughs> well, okay, section two. So if you're following along in the, um, on the repo, go to workshop notes section 2.md. In this section, we're going to actually render the FAQs in the front end. Now, earlier, we built a dynamic block. And there's two kinds of blocks, a static block and a dynamic block. What a static block does is uh, it'll render the, it uses an edit function to render the content in the editor and a save function, which saves the content to the WordPress database, which then gets rendered in the, the front end. What a dynamic block does is it does a, the Editor is pretty much the same as for a static block. An edit function renders in the editor, but it uses PHP to render the front end. And we're using a dynamic block because if somebody adds an, a, a new FAQ uh, custom post type to, uh, you know, then it will, the, the PHP will dynamically fetch it without you having to go into the editor and update the block. So we created a dynamic block, so we're going to separately do the front-end part in PHP, and then later on we'll do the editor part in JavaScript React. Um, so because we've already got our short code, code in PHP, we can kind of reuse that. It's pretty much the same code that we're going to use in the, from the short code function, and we're going to use it in the block to render the front end. And we're going to use uh, render.php. If you look in the, uh, where are the WC FAQ block folder where all the, uh, uh, where your edit.js and your block.json was that you edited earlier, there's a render.php file. You can, what you would normally do is just copy, it, copy your shortcode function across or, or the contents of the shortcode function and edit it. But what you can do here is, is you can just copy the code from here. And you'll see it's virtually identical. There's just a couple of changes. In place of the, the uh, hard-coded class in the WCEU FAQ PHP file, we're instead putting get block wrapper attributes, which will dynamically put a class in um, and we're also going to be using that later on to add some, uh, some dynamic CSS that the user can change. But for now, all it's doing is putting the class onto that div. And the only other change from the, from the shortcode function is we've removed the tax query at the moment. So for now, this will just render all the all of the FAQs. We haven't got the facility at the moment to get FAQs from a specific category. Okay, once you've got that file created, save it. And then run npm start. And as I hinted at earlier, what npm start does, it does pretty much the same as npm build. It actually builds the, the project from your working directory into the build directory. But if you relied on npm build, you'd have to, every time you made a change to a file, you'd have to run that command, and that would get pretty tired pretty quickly. So npm start runs a watcher and kind of automates that process for you. Every time you make a change, it'll automatically run the build process. So you can get on with coding, and whenever you make a change, or whenever you save a change, the watcher runs the build, 
and then you can check your change in the editor or the front end without having to run the build manually. So if you've got your render.php function and you've run npm start, if you go to your front end of where you've put the, the block, which you previously showed a little blue block with a little blue box with some text in, you should now see all the FAQs. Who's not seeing that? Yeah, all good, okay, we'll move on. Okay, so let's show the FAQs from a specific category. Add this just above, well, or before the, the WP query runs. Yes, you'll need to add it after the args array is defined and before the WP query is called. So at the moment, this is just, gonna, this is just a hard-coded uh, query to get a particular taxonomy term. If you save the file again, you'll find the build will run automatically. So if you watch in your, in the, um, in your terminal, you should see the, um, the build run. It might just flash by. Um, and then if you check your front end again, you should just see the FAQs from that category. Everyone got that? Okay, excellent. How's the pace, too slow? No? Okay. I will speed things up then. Okay, so at the moment we're just treating the FAQs from a particular category. So let's make our first steps to making the category user configurable. We need to add an attribute to block.json. So in block.json, in the WTC FAQ block directory. At the bottom, well, block.json is an object, uh, contains an object, and your attributes will be the final object in that, um, well, with the final property in that uh, object. So you do put it just above the closing bracket of the object you'll need to add a comma after the previous one. And the thing with block with JSON is it's very strict about commas. You can't have a trailing comma, so watch out for that. If you have a trailing comma in block.json, the compiler will bomb out, and you'll, if you look in the terminal, you'll get lots of red text, and you'll be returned to the command prompt, and you have to run npm start again after you've fixed the error in block.json. Otherwise, you'll just you'll end up in an endless loop. Oh. Sorry, I forgot to change the slide. That's what you add. This is, what, this is the attribute you add to the end of block.json. Again, you can copy and paste it from section2.md.
then with that attribute in place in block.json, let's use, the ca use that uh, attribute in, uh, in render.php. So change out all the previous tax query with the hard-coded category to this where you're using attributes category. That all your attributes that you define in block.json are automatically available to you in render.php. So any attribute that you define in block.json, you can use in render.php. But what we're also doing here is we're checking, like we did in the shortcode function, we're checking if category exists first before we add the taxonomy query to the arguments that get passed to WP query. And you should see in your front end, because we haven't made any changes to the editor yet, you should see in your front end it's, it's exactly the same because the default category that we've used in block.json for the attribute is the same as we had hard-coded earlier. So what you can now do is go into block.json and change your default to something else. The other category, if, you're using the, if you imported the XML file, is Vienna. No, not yet. No, you have to go into block.json and change it from Athens to Vienna. If you want to show everything in the default, you, you can just remove the default or put an empty string there. Yes. <coughs> or just not have the default property at all. But if you remove the default, you need to remove the trailing comma after type string, because JSON doesn't like trailing commas. So try that. Try changing your try the default attri category attribute to Vienna and see what you get in your front end. And as this gentleman suggested, try removing it completely, and you should get all your FAQs in the front end. Try even changing it to a non-existent category like Paris, which does, if you're using the XML file doesn't exist and see what happens. I've got to admit, I didn't actually try this myself, but my guess is you'll get a no post found. We all caught up. Remove what, sorry? The whole default line. If you don't the whole default. Did you remove the trailing comma? Yeah. And you got an error? Um, it's, it's showing all the, it's showing all the posts, but it's giving me the uh, undefined. Okay, right, right, all that. If in doubt, compare your code to the workshop stages F, uh, stage two folder, because this is the stage we're at now. Your project should now look identical to the stage two folder in workshop stages. Okay, is everyone else getting the behavior I'm saying? If you change that category, if you change that to Vienna, you just get one or two posts. If you change it back to Athens, you get all of them, uh, all of the Athens, four Athens ones. If you remove it completely, you get all the posts. Or if you put a, if you put a, 
a category that doesn't exist, you get no posts found. Everyone getting that? Awesome. On to section three then. Let's render the FAQs in the editor. So this is where we're really making progress and really starting to uh, implement the kind of WYSIWYG functionality that users are used to. So instead of seeing a code, uh, a short code block, that rather boring looking thing, they will actually see in the editor what, they, what is rendered in the front end. Right, so now open edit JS in the uh, WCFAQ block directory edit.js. Somewhere near the top of that, well, at the top of that file, you'll see a number of import statements. You can leave those alone but add a new import statement that. Yeah, we're working now with uh, workshop notes section 3.md if you just want to copy and paste stuff. And this is the first code block in, that, in the section 3.md. So just put that in below the, all the other import statements. So use entity records is a React hook that fetches the, uh, that will fetch data from the WordPress database using the REST API. So it's provided in the core data package. So we import it and destructure it from the, the core data package. Okay, next, replace the entire edit function that you see there. Yeah, I think it's only about three or four lines at the moment. Replace that entire edit function with this. And this is a good time to have your, is to just copy and paste it from the section 3.md file. Because that's, oh, did I, did I uh, change the slide? the slides. Apologies for that. Trying to kind of work in with two screens here. So let's take a look at what's going on here. So we're using the use entity records hook that we imported earlier. Um, we're telling it that we want to get records of a particular post type, and the post type we want is WCEUFAQ, our custom post type that we defined in the, uh, in the main plugin file. And we're storing that in FAQs. So we'll have an array of posts in FAQs. Then, then we're just returning a... Uh, Basically, we're just rendering the markup. Use block props is a hook that puts uh, props onto the containing element. In this case, uh, a div is a containing element. At the moment, it's just putting the class on, much in the way that we did in render.php. But again, later on, we'll be using it for some, uh, some of our own CSS to spread that onto our our uh, containing element. Then we're checking whether we've got FAQs. Um, what you could do if you want is, um, is put a console.log underneath the const FAQs use entity records just to see what you've got in FAQs and have a look in the console. You see FAQs will have a, an object that has two or three things that report the status um, like has resolved or is resolving, and then it has a records property which stores the records. And if you do put a console.log, you'll see that 
initially it'll say is, revo is resolving is true and the records array is empty. And eventually is resolving to, uh, changes to false, has resolved changes to true and your posts are then in, uh, in the records property in an array. So we're checking whether there's anything in rec FAQs.records. If there is, then we're going to use uh, the JavaScript uh, array.map uh, function to iterate over them and just return the content, the title and the content in a detailed summary element, just like render.php does and uh, the, and the short code function, the original short code function does. And the dangerously set inner HTML just means that uh, if there's any, uh, if you're using any angle brackets or, or something in your content, we're not in the, in the demo content, but if there was, they would be rendered instead of, uh, instead of uh, being ampersand, uh, whatever the element. Uh. And the section has a class name, which you'll see render.php and the original uh, shortcode function had that and we'll be using that later on to individually style each, each block. Okay, are we all there? This uh, is resolving as, as resolved. Is it waiting for the, the records to be read from the element? Yes, if is resolving is true, it's waiting for the records to come in from the database. So it's wa waiting for the REST API to deliver the records. Um, and has resolved will, will be false. When the records have arrived, then is resolving changes to false, has resolved is true, and your records should be in the, or your posts should be in the records. Can you use that to set some dynamic stuff like the drop down? To you can, you could, you could use it to put a spinner, you know, so you could say if is resolving, if, if is resolving, put a spinner in, you know, show a spinner so yeah, actually, I should have I should have added that to the project. <laughs> it's like one line of code. Well, you need to import Spinner, and it's one line of code. But <laughs> I leave that as an exercise for <laughs> yeah, homework. <laughs> yeah, put a Spinner in while you're waiting for the data to come in. <laughs> it's easy. You know, if is resolving, sh show the Spinner which you need to import. Okay. Sorry, just catching up with my notes. Where am I? Okay, right. At this stage, you should now, if you go into your editor, you should now see all the posts in the editor as well. All your FAQs in the editor in an expanding summary, de detailed summary. Yeah? but it still doesn't look like what you see in the, the short code because, uh, because it's not styled uh, yet, but we'll come to that. Right, the next stage then is to get the FAQs of a certain category. So at the moment we're just seeing all of the FAQs. So change that, that line where it says FAQs, you know, you, the use entity records, to put an extra parameter, which is an object saying we want uh, posts from the WCEU FAQ cat taxonomy with the, uh, with the ID for. I'm really regret regretting this naming scheme now. WCEU FAQ cat. Yeah. Huh? 
Well, actually, <laughs> it was for, for my WordPress install. What you might need to do is go into your WordPress admin and check what the ID is for your two categories in there, because you, you, when you imported it, it might have assigned different IDs than mine. So it might not be four. So check your category IDs first and change it to whatever category ID you want to show. Everyone happy with finding the category ID? Yeah? Okay, don't do anything yet because once you've got the category ID and put it there in place of the four, uh, no, sorry, that, that's fine. That's fine. If you, you should now be able to see in the editor the I, you know, the the FAQs from that particular category. And if you've got, you've got two categories, try changing it to the other category in this code block. And you should see the FAQs from the other category as well. Yeah, we're coming to that next. Oh. Yeah, I think, I think it does. But I think it does work anyway, yeah. With, uh, Yeah, but we are going to change it to an integer next, just to. Okay, so let's um, let's actually use an, the attribute instead. So now, because we're having to use the ID instead of the slug, which we used in the shortcode function, change the attribute to this. So we're going to change type to integer instead of string, and we're going to put three. Oh, sorry, we're going to put whatever ID uh, corresponds to your category. In my case, it was three. And then we can change the, the ah. Hold on, have I missed a step here? Sorry, bear with me just a second. No, I haven't missed a step, yeah. Okay, now because we're using an ID, Instead of the slug, we're going to need to change our t tax query in uh, render.php. So instead of using field slug, we need to continue need to change that to field term ID in order for our front end to keep to work correctly. Okay, and then we'll do the same in, uh, or something similar in edit.js. We need to, we're gonna get that attribute now that it's an, an ID instead of a, a slug. What we need to do in 
In render.php, the attributes are kind of automatically available. In the edit function, we need to destructure the attributes from the object that gets passed to the edit function. So that the first line of the edit function just destructure attributes in the parameters. And then, once we've got the attributes object, we can destructure category from it. At the moment, that's the only property that the attributes object has, because it's the only attribute we've defined. And then we can use it in place of our hard-coded uh, category on the last line there. And then if you go and change it in block.json to the other category ID, it should change in the editor and in the front end. So you're getting that behavior now. If you, up, if you update the block.json to the two different IDs, uh, both the editor view and the front end view, the content changes. All getting that? Awesome, so now let's make our block look like our original short code. And we'll just put all of that into style.scss. So our original shortcode function will still use the old CSS file, but the block the, uh, for both the front end, the render.php, and the edit function for the editor will use this CSS. which at the moment is identical to the CSS that the shortcode function is using. But that's gonna change. So if you did as I suggested earlier and added your shortcode block underneath, uh, rather the, the okay. <laughs> The block that we've just created, the WCEUFAQ block, if you've added that block be below the shortcode block where you type the shortcode in, now both blocks should look this, both uh, things, sets of FAQ in the front end should look the same, with the same color scheme. All getting that? Amazing, let's go on to section four. We're actually going to make it. So at the moment, we're having to change the category in block.json, the, the ID there, in order to uh, have different sets of, so suppose we want one block to show uh, FAQs about Athens and the other block to show FAQs about Vienna. Um, we have to hard, hard code, uh, well, we can't do that at the moment, but you know, it's, it's, um, it's hard coded, you know, in, in block.json. Um, there's no way to actually do it apart from editing block.json, which isn't very user-friendly for your average content editor. So we're gonna, and this is where, you know, as I said earlier, uh, you, we can add functionality to a block that makes it more user-friendly than a short code. So for a short code, the user would have to add that attribute, you know, uh, so the short code uh, category equals, and they'd need to know the category slug for the short code. So we're gonna make this easier for the user by putting all the categories in a drop down. So when they add a block, an FAQ block, they can, they've got a, uh, a drop down select element that they can choose the category from, and they don't need to know the the names of the categories or the IDs of the categories. So that's what we're gonna do in this section. So 
etc. I don't know why it suddenly skipped a load of slides there. Right, let's change the default to zero. This is in block.json, by the way. And now, because the, because the, the, the category might be zero, we only want to conditionally add the query to our use entity records. So we're still going to destructure de de our category from the attributes. And then we're going to check if the value of category. If it's not zero, uh, so this is the ternary conditional. Uh, I hope you've all come across that before. So if category is not zero, so if you know it's an ID of a, of a category, then it will do, it will return uh, that object, which is the same as what we previously had where it says query there. Otherwise, it will return an empty object. It could, you could actually return null there as well. And so use entity records will either fetch the um, post type, post of the post type WCFAQ uh, with no query if there isn't a, a category or if category is zero, which is the default. Or it will use the, the category object there, WCEU FAQ cat category, in place of query there. I'm sure you all understand what's going on there. So you can try that if you like. You know, um, uh, actually, actually, no. Well, let's let's not do that. Let's let's now start making the category user selectable. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add an element, uh, a select element, to the inspector panel. The inspector panel is the the right hand sidebar in the block editor where you often get controls for changing color and so on. So we're going to add, an, add a select element to that that is going to uh, contain a drop down with the categories that the user can select. But we've already got a div which is, um, which is what the uh, what edit returns you know, to render in the editor and we can't have uh, more than one root level element in a React component. So what we're going to do here, we're going to add what's called a, a, a fragment wrapper, which is basically just empty HTML elements. So at, just at the top there, you've got two angle brackets, just like any HTML element, but it's empty, and then a closing one at the bottom there. So just wrap the entire div in these fragment elements. Of e fragment element, sorry, singular. Okay, so now we've got a new root level element, and we can now add elements within that alongside the div element. So we're going to add some, uh, some elements there. So we need to import some components. So we need to import inspector controls from the block editor, and we need to import panel body and the select control from components. So just add those at the top. Uh, Along, your, along with your other import statements. I don't think, I'm pretty sure you can't use an import twice from the same thing. So add, you've already got import, use block props from WordPress block editor, so you have to put inspector controls in there as part of that. Okay, and once you've got those imported, are we ready to move on from this slide? Yeah. Once you've got those imported, 
we're now going to add those components to, uh, to our edit function inside the wrapper, inside the fragment, as you saw above the div, add an in the inspector controls element. Inside the inspector controls, you've got a panel body, and inside the panel body, you've got a select control. The inspect, sorry, was it? In, inside the fragment, above your div element, where, you, where you're rendering the content, so if I go back, uh, so you added a fragment to wrap your div element, and then just above the div element and underneath the opening fragment, you would put that. So it's illustrated there. So you've got your opening fragment, put your inspector controls, and panel body, and select control, and then your div element, which you've already got. So you put it between the, the fragment opener and the existing div element. So inspector controls will put it will uh, add it to the, the sidebar panel where you're used to seeing all your color editing stuff. Panel body just formats it nicely inside, that, uh, inside the inspector panel. Um, and you can also use panel body to, if you've got lots of different controls, you can like categorize them and, and label them. Uh, so you can use panel body for that as well. And then inside that, you have the actual select control where we're gonna have, uh, have our drop down with the, with the different categories for the user to select. So we've already previously got category. We de destructured it from attributes. So we can give, um, we can assign the category to the value so that the uh, select control will display whatever the current cat category in attributes is. And we have an on change function, which we're gonna come to. So we all got the inspector controls. I think if you try and view it in the editor now, I think you'll get an error because it'll complain that you haven't got an on change cat function. So let's fix that. Oh, sorry, before we do that, previously we had an empty options element. What we need to do is just put the options in there. At the moment, we're just hard coding the, uh, the options. Again, the values will need to be the, cate the category IDs for your instantiation of WordPress, not mine. So at the moment we're just hard coding that just to get it working. Again, you just copy and paste it from section 4.md. In fact, if you copied and pasted, pasted it, you'd have got that all, both of those, that and that all together anyway. Okay, so the next thing to do is to add that handler function, that on change handler. So you can add that, and you need to put it above the return statement. So my recommendation is just put that function immediately above the return. Now this isn't gonna work yet, so don't try it.
Right, so if you recall from, from over here, our select control had um, on change, it would call an on change cat function, which is what we've just implemented. Um, whatever the value has been changed to from the select drop down gets passed to the on change cat function, and then set attributes will change the category in the attributes. And we cost, and because we set, we defined it as an integer, we need to cut, use the, the JavaScript function to cast it to a number. But this isn't, isn't going to work yet because we haven't got set attributes. So that's also passed to the edit function within the edit, the, the object that gets passed to the edit function. And so we can destructure it onto the edit function. And that, that should all work now. If you've got the correct IDs in your select uh, element, you should be able to change that and it will dynamically change in the editor and if you save the post, it'll change on the front end and you can change the categories or have no category to, uh, I, did, I did, yeah, I gave you a label all and you can select all categories as well. What's gone wrong? Yeah, so the set attribute function updates the attribute, so the default attribute no longer applies. Okay, everyone caught up? Okay, so at the moment, let me just back up a couple of slides. At the moment, we just hard-coded the options and you needed to go and check what your, um, what your category IDs were. Let's make that more dynamic now. Let's actually fetch the categories. So we're going to use, use entity records again, but instead of a post type, this time we're going to request a taxonomy. And the taxonomy we're going to request is WCE, I'm regretting this naming again, WCEU FAQ cat, which we defined in the original uh, 
original plugin PHP file. Yeah, we, we, we configured our post type and our custom taxonomy there. And now we're asking use entity records, which we've already imported and used once to fetch the posts of the FAQ uh, post type. Now we're asking it to fetch the t all the posts in the taxonomy WCEU FAQ cat and to store it in cats. And why not run a console.log cats just to see what you've got? And just like when we got the post, you'll see has resolved, is resolving, and a records property. And once it's, once it's finished resolving and has resolved is true, the records property will have, if you've used the, uh, the, the XML file that, uh, from earlier, you'll have two records there with the two taxonomy terms. Okay, so let's start replacing the, uh, the array in the select element. So let's create a new uh, constant options. We're going to check for records, and if there are records, just like we did for the posts, we're going to map over them and uh, and return an object for each each of the taxonomies, the category name and the category ID. Again, you can put that anywhere in the edit function above the uh, return. Um, where are you seeing that? The on change function on the after the, the cat has resolved. Where are you finding the, this function on change cat, right? Yeah. And then in here we have to, to do the problem. Just in your example, you have, you have a two steps. Oh, I have a typo. Okay. Yeah. If you uh, copy and paste it, you get an error. Okay. It's the last uh, one of the section four. The last, the last code box. Okay, correct, but I haven't got that far yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you are correct. So I will point that out when I get there. <laughs> right. So as I said, this, this block of code can go anywhere in your edit function. Um, so long as it's after the call to use entity records to get the taxonomy and before the, the return. Okay, so now we can replace the static options we had before. Now we can statically have uh, the all label because that's not a category. We're not gonna get that from, uh, from our call to use entity records. So we, st we keep the label all and then we spread the options uh, variable, the, the options array that we just created here onto the rest, and that dynamically populates options. So if you add another category, it will dynamically get added there. Whoops. And as that gentleman pointed out, there's a typo. It's not on change C cat, it's on change cat. So my apologies for that.
And now, from the select drop-down in your inspector panel, you should be able to drop that down. You'll see your categories, and if you change them, the, it'll dynamically and instantly update in the editor, and if you save the post, it'll change in the front end as well. Everyone getting that? Amazing. Let's move on to section five. We've got 20 minutes left. So if you're following along with the notes, open up section 5.md. And we're going to do some more importing. So as well as the used block props and inspector controls, we're now going to inspect, Im import panel color settings from block editor. Okay, and then we add that component into our JSX. Put it just beneath, bear with me a second. So at the moment, put it immediately below your panel body. So you've got your closing panel body tag. Put panel, panel color settings immediately below that. Now there's two things to note here, a value, so we're going to need an attribute called question text color, and once again we need an on-change function. So let's start by adding the attribute, so you put that immediately below your previous attribute, which was category. Once you've got the attribute, ah. once you've got the attribute, destructure it. So alongside category, where you've destructured category, also destructure question text color from attributes. So that makes question text color available to. Uh, to our panel color settings component. And then we also need the handler function, which works pretty much the same as the other handler function, just put it below the other, hand, hand, other handler function. Um, so once it on a change, you'll get the, the value passed to it, and then you can use set attributes to change the question text color attribute in block, in defined in block.json to whatever value gets passed. Okay, now all this will work and the, the attribute will be updated, but nothing's going to happen because you can't, because the CSS is still hard-coded. So the, the, the text color of the question is not going to change. So let's fix that now. Let's create an FAQ styles object. And what we're doing here is we're using a, um, a CSS variable or a CSS custom property, and then assigning question text color, which we destructured in the previous step. So the value in the question text color attribute will be assigned to the CSS variable dash dash question text color. You're all familiar with CSS variables, yeah? Now, normally CSS variables, are you, I put at the root of a, a CSS file 
but you can actually put CSS variables you know, in the scope of a particular uh, CSS element, you know, like a class or an ID or... And that is essentially what we're doing here. We're defining that CSS variable uh, onto, uh, onto just the block. So what we now need to do is, remember I said earlier that use block props passes um, uh, props onto our containing div, and it was previously passing the just the, the class, or class name. Now we're going to use that FAQ styles object that's got a, the CSS variable. We're going to pass that to use block props so it spreads that onto the div. So the div, our wrapping div element, will now have a, a CSS variable with the value of whatever is stored in the attributes. And then we, what we then need to do is actually use that CSS variable in our CSS. So you see that fourth or fifth line from the bottom there, the detail summary color, we're actually using the CSS variable there. You're familiar with that syntax, var and then a CSS variable. And that CSS variable only applies to that block because it's been spread onto just that div unlike what you might be used to where the CSS variable applied to the root element in CSS. Now you should have um, in your inspector panel, you should have a, a text color or question text color uh, element that you can use to change the color of the text. And you'll find that works fine in the editor, but doesn't work in the front end. Yep, everyone getting that? So let's make that work in the front end as well. So over in render.php, create, so similar to what we've just done in, in the edit, we're going to create an FAQs. FAQ styles variable, so we're in PHP now, so the syntax changes. And it's going to have the, uh, the same CSS variable name and as attributes are automatically available to render.php, we can just assign the question text color attribute to that CSS variable. So this is all very similar to what we did in, in JavaScript in edit.js. I've put that on two lines because of the slide, but you'd normally put that on one line if you're copy pasting from section 5.md it's all on one line and then just in the way that we passed uh, show it, uh, the FAQ styles to, uh, the, to use block props for the editor, we also now uh, pass it as a parameter to the get block wrapper elements on our containing div in render.php. So this once again puts the uh, puts the CSS variable uh, and makes it available just to that div. And because we've already changed the uh, the style dot CSS, that should now sh any change you make in the editor to the text color of the question will now show up in the front end as well. Everyone getting that? 
Right, we're, we're short of time now, so let's whiz through. Let's do exactly the same for the, the question background colour. So we need a new attribute in block.json. Oh, sorry, my, mis my mistake. This is a new colour setting. Oh, have, have I skipped a slide? Oh no. oh, no. Sorry, I've got these the wrong way round. Yes, yeah, so add, add a new attribute. Once you've got the new attribute, we need to add a new colour setting. Now, if you look at the panel colour settings, the colour settings is an array of objects. So just add the new... question background color object there. Okay, okay, we've got 10 minutes, so I'm gonna move, move on. Oh, okay, I already, already did that. Now we need to destructure the attributes. So alongside the previous attributes, caster in question text color, we now need to destructure the question background color. And then we add that to FAQ styles, assigning it to another CSS variable question background color. So this is all this, pretty much all the same as we did before. So I'm kind of whizzing through this because of the time. We, we still need a handler function. So add that just beneath the, the other two handler functions. So when you change the color, it will update the attribute. Um, and now we just need to update the CSS where the details summary has a back, we're using the CSS variable on the background color. And now you should be able to change both the text color and the background color of the question. So that works in the editor, but not in the front end. Um, ah, so, sorry, did I not move the slide on? Yeah, okay, so we need to add the CSS variable to the background color in, in styles.scss. And then to make it work in the front end, we need to get that, uh, add the, CSS variable to our FAQ styles and assign it the at attribute value. And now your new background color for your question will show up in the front end as well. All good? Okay. So let's do the same for the for the, quest, for the answers now, let's add, we'll, we'll whiz through this, because uh, it's all stuff we've done before now. We just need add two attributes, one for the answer text color and the answer background color. I'm gonna whiz through and hope you're, you're just copying and pasting the code from section 5.md now. then you need to add a new, we're gonna add a new panel color setting. So we're gonna have two panel color settings in our code. So you're gonna have your panel body, which contains your, your category select control. You've got one panel body, panel color settings for the question colors. And just below that, we're gonna add a new panel color settings for the answer colors.
And then just like the other one, uh, the one for the question, you add an array of, of objects to define uh, the, the value which it's going to come from the attribute and an onChange function, which we haven't done yet. And did we not destructure the, uh, the attribute? No, we didn't destructure the attributes yet. I think there's five minutes left, so that's fine. Yeah. Actually, we need to reset the room as well, so sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll just wrap up really, really quickly. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna whiz through this because this is stuff we've done before. Create the handler functions for these. If you wanna catch up, it's all in section 5.md, which, uh, which you can look at a bit later. It's all in the repo. Create the handler functions, destructure the attributes, so the new attributes are answer text color and answer background color. Add them to FAQ styles so that they get spread onto the, by use block props onto the, the, uh, the wrapping div. Use them, use the two new CSS variables in the details thing, the color and background color. And then in, the, in render.php, we just add, keep adding the new custom variables to FAQ styles. And that's me, that's my Twitter <laughs> handle. Thank you very much.